This is going to be an insane day and you get to experience it with us because we're about to unbox the most poisonous animal in the world. Okay, here we go. Excited? Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a bunch of enclosures in our nature room that we haven't really gotten around to completely finishing because of how busy we've been. So we need the right animals for these enclosures. And uh, well, we're pretty excited because we just got something that we're really, really excited over. Something Casey is really into since she was a little girl. This is no ordinary frog. It's a poison dart frog, but it happens to be the most toxic one of all, and it is legitimately considered the world's most poisonous animal. So, why am I opening up this box with my three-year-old? Well, that's because these animals are only poisonous in nature. These are golden poison frogs, or golden dart frogs, and their scientific name is Phyllobates terribilis. Terribilis because of the insane toxicity that is found within these frogs in nature. Now, why are they not toxic in captivity? Well, because all poison dart frogs are toxic or poisonous by nature because of the insects, particularly the ants, that they eat. So in captivity, we feed dart frogs, insects like fruit flies, bean beetles, or even pinhead crickets, just to name a few. And those are not the types of insects that are going to allow the frogs to synthesize batrachotoxin, which is that deadly, deadly toxin that they carry in nature. These insects that are fed in captivity are perfectly fine for them and they enable them to live a pretty darn long lifespan, which can be upwards of 20 years. You'll notice that there are two different colors of these terribles right here, or as some refer to them as terribs. Uh, we have the orange blackfoot and we also have the mint ones. They're both the exact same frog, but there's different populations or locales where the colors are a little bit different. That's not unlike the Dendrobates tinctorius dart frogs that we have in a different setup. Now these frogs are not gonna live in here. I just wanted to get them out so we can take a close look at them. But now we're going to safely handle them without worry to ourselves and place them in the tank they're gonna live in. Now, if this were a wild terribleis, I would be totally screwed because these animals are so toxic that simply touching them could mean the end. Now, when it comes to the indigenous people that use the toxin from these frogs for the heads of their arrows, those arrows will stay that toxic for upwards of two years or even more. All right, here we go. First frog in. So here's one of the mint ones. And again, this is the exact same frog I just showed you, but in the mint form. And um, right now you'll notice on both the orange and the mint that the color's a little bit diffused or broken up. Well, once these frogs are a little bit over a year old, they will become a completely solid color. And the mint ones will be a beautiful, cool mint color, almost a white. And the orange ones will just be such a deep, beautiful orange with, of course, those black feet. So these frogs will max out at about two inches. So they're not a large animal at all. Very similar to our other dart frogs. And they're gonna live in this beautiful bioactive planted terrarium that um, is completely set up. It's got proper drainage. It's got logs and driftwood and little coconut hides for them. It's got pothos and ferns and some other plants as well as uh, broken up magnolia leaves on the ground there. Uh, it's got isopods in it and it's got springtail. So again, fully bioactive. It's a lifelong home for these frogs. Uh, and I can't wait to see how they color up with age. So this is what I was talking about. This is one of the staple live food items for captive dart frogs. These are just fruit flies. This is a culture, you could breed them on your own. And we're gonna go ahead and give them to the frogs that we've had already as those other ones settle in. These are Dendrobates tinctorius. And uh, you're gonna see some outstanding colors and you're gonna see a pretty cool feeding response. This is all you do. You just dump them in like that and wait.
We're not done with frogs just yet, and while the poison dart frogs come from Colombia, these frogs right here come from Australia. These are the Australian White's tree frogs, probably the best pet frog you can find. These are absolutely amazing frogs, super easy to care for, and what we're gonna do is put them here in what used to be a poison dart frog tank. We had started this one off with the, with the uh, dart frogs in mind, but um, it's just a little too tall. They need more floor space, so we're gonna give this to these little guys right here. Look at that, isn't that a beautiful frog? These frogs do get to be a decent size. Um, all personality, really easy to feed. They don't like it hot. They don't really like it too cold. Um, just kind of a temperate dwelling species and uh, a favorite by many. So now that our new frogs are able to get settled in here at Garden State Tortoise, I can now show you some of the new turtles and tortoises we just got, starting with this individual right here. This is Cora macordi, whose common name is McCord's box turtle. It's an Asian species of turtle and it is severely critically endangered, to the point where people think it is actually extinct in the wild. Why? Because there hasn't been a wild specimen spotted in its native China since 2010. So although this turtle has been known to science for a while, it was as late as 2005 that they actually discovered it in the wild. But its numbers started plummeting back in the 1980s when the Asian turtle trade really took off. Coramacorda is a semi-aquatic species that inhabits bamboo patches of broadleaf forests. So we don't know if this one is a boy or a girl yet because you can't tell the sex of baby turtles. They all look female, but whatever it is, uh, we can't wait for it to grow up so we can pair it with another individual and hopefully put more of these out there because this really is a species that is in need and worthy of every little bit of attention. Let's finish this thing with a bang. These are our brand new South African giant leopard tortoises. I actually recently picked these two up for Casey because they are one of her absolute favorite tortoise species of all time. The South African leopard is often referred to the giant leopard tortoise because they tend to get very large. Now they are not the largest tortoise species here at Garden State Tortoise by far, but they certainly will be very large and they can pass 20 to 25 inches as far as the size of the shell goes. This right here is Asante, she's the female and Asante means thank you. And this is Deo, the male, which means the arrival of joy in Nigerian. These are incredible, exquisite tortoises, not the hardiest and also not for the beginner, but this is Garden State Tortoise. We're well equipped for every kind of tortoise here. And uh, well, we're looking forward to the future with these two. I hope you guys enjoyed meeting our new arrivals. Uh, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, leave your ideas in the comments. And hey guys, please don't forget to subscribe. But when you do that, make sure you click that bell icon right next to the subscribe button so you get notified every time we post a video.